Well, hey there, everybody. Here I am, and I'm back. And this is a video that's going to be actually on both of my channels because it applies to both, both um, the modeling world for Air Force Builder and uh, the you know just general sharp things for for Doc B ninety one B. And it's a little bit different, but I thought I'd do this because um, I've been frustrated recently with these different products and uh, they're, they're very common the number 11 utility blade um, or you know we also call it the exacto blade now to be clear calling it that and and like i said it's very common to do that but and it, you know so exacto is a brand like we just might call somebody might call all tissues a kleenex or every single um do i have my box of band see i just did it they're not I always keep this close to the workbench. Um, bandages are plastic strips, but we call them all Band-Aids. But Band-Aid is a specific brand. They're not all actually Band-Aids. You know, so Exacto is a brand that makes some. Um, and by the way, when we talk about Exacto knives or Exacto blades, there's a whole lot of different blades that can fit in here. This is specifically the one that we most normally associate with that is the number 11 blade, number 11 hobby blade. Um, and this one also says number 11 and it's important that they both say number 11 because we'll see that later on but there, there's a whole lot and they they come in different sizes actually as well I'm only I'm only talking about the this this kind of most common pencil size I don't know and oh this happens to be made by exacto right here whereas though um, this, isn't this one is Excel just to give you an example just to give you an, an idea there's also wider ones um, I hadn't actually planned to get all the way into this but so these are little saw blades that fit into the wider handles I don't see I do have them right here wider handles with different blades um, so anyway just so we get the terminology straight they're utility blades um, this is called the hobby blade this is called the standard blade but they're utility blades and while this is probably the most familiar holder or tool that uses them, there are others throughout the world that that use them. There, one of them is the there's the tuck, there's the ruck. Those are some of the more common um, kind of in your pocket EDC type blade holders that are out there. Um, they and they're they've got kind of a price tag associated with it. Um, there's this one that I have reviewed before from Mech Army that I really like, but boy, is it expensive. This one is, I, and believe me, feel free to throw, like, what were you thinking in the comments? This one's $80. This is an $80 blade holder. You know why? Because it's got four little tritium vials in it. It's titanium. Could have gotten it for 40 but I was like, oh, go big or go home. So I got the, the tritium. This is back when Mass Drop, when Drop was called Mass Drop, and Drop had more than headsets and keyboards on it. But so I've got this one. This is very common and and pretty well priced actually by Gerber. This is called the Pry the Prybrid X. Now there's a large Prybrid that has large utility blades that we might look at sometime later on. Um, this is the Prybrid X. And this is also a number 11 blade holder. And this one is designed for your EDC in your pocket type use. Um, so this is really one that we associate kind of with, with workshops, hobby benches. We use this at the shop, uh, this exact thing, or and sometimes uh, scalpel, actual medical scalpel holders with, with disposable blades for doing all sorts of fine work. Now, in the modeling world, so anybody that builds models knows um, whether, whether they're, I mean, and it doesn't matter what level, whether they're for wargaming, whether they're scale models, whether they're cars, trucks, airplanes, tanks, sci-fi, anything. You use this for just about anything. Like, you know, some people will use this to actually cut pieces off the sprue. If you're not familiar with the term, this is a sprue um, to physically cut the pieces off. Um, most people that are a little bit more with it will use a, a cutter to cut, and then you use the knife to trim the little excess plastic after you cut use this to do all sorts of all sorts of trimming and cutting and and finagling once you're done 
for uh, cutting um, stock plastic if you if you're gonna make some kind of custom stuff so sad but these are just pieces of polystyrene plastic rods you know for cutting them to the right shape for doing all that kind of stuff and, and it had you know uh, architectural model makers use these um, you know using working with balsa wood working with whatever I mean they're so common and they're even if you're not a model builder they're in so many different households just for all sorts of stuff people use them to open mail people use them to open boxes to cut tape what whatever but in general these are very easy because they can accept almost anything of this of this size of the small size blades because there's really nothing they just as long as it'll fit in here and it's got a friction kind of uh, hold on it it'll fit and that's great and that's easy and you can buy number 11 blades I bought this whole package uh, like 10 blades for like $6.99 on Amazon two years ago and I still have another carbon steel which is why they're all wrapped in this waxed paper to keep them from getting rusty but I still have so many left um, you can resharpen them and reuse them but why i mean it just why <laughs> it's such a pain um and every time i'm working on something new or a lot of times i'll i'll end up with two or three blades through a whole project like i'll i'll use a blade a new blade when i start a new project and then when i move on to um cutting masking for for clear parts or whatever or painting i'll switch to new blades i always want a nice sharp tip um, and then when I switch to decals, I want a nice, another one, a nice sharp tip for cutting through the decals to make sure that I'm getting the nicest, cleanest cuts. And, you know, um, they're, they're not expensive at all. And then, like I said, there are all sorts of, like, if you just go look in any, um, uh, Walmart even at Michael's Hobby Lobby, you look in the section where these are, there's, there's a hundred different types of blades you can put in here. Unfortunately, when it comes to some of the fancier ones, while they say like for example um they look they look like they just use number 11 blades right like this one looks like plain old number 11 blade and looks fine right this one even says uses plain old number 11 blade uses standard number 11 blades that's what it says um and that's actually out a little farther than it needs to be um, and this is one that's designed for you to just carry around and replace the blade whenever. Sometimes you got to be a little bit more careful um, because not all blades are made the same. And I know that sounds ridiculous, um, but not all blades are made the same. Now, the, these are actual exacto bland bland. <laughs> these are actual exacto brand blades. These obviously are not. These are by Fiskars. Why does it matter? Because they're 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 standard sized but they're not always exactly the same and i recently ran into a problem with this guy right here because you look at the quality of this blade and i wanted to switch it and i thought no problem i've got all these number 11 blades around and when it came time to switch i realized that i could not fit and i'll show you the problem so this has a pretty easy little system there see that little that little tab you pull the you push on the tab and it comes off and these blades let me let me show you a standard number 11 blade and i say standard number 11 but that's just like i said you know different makers different stuff they look very similar they look like they should just fit they 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 look like they're the same but slight little tiny differences specifically in the hole and a little bit with the top and the shaping there and you know what you come to realize that just because these both say number 11 blades they're not the same because when i tried to get this blade in here it and it fits into the collar it's the right size but it doesn't lock because it's not this was designed with a very specific blade in mind and so since this doesn't there's a little see there's a little little nib in there that's supposed to settle down directly into that little opening and that's what locks the blade in if it won't settle down in there it restricts you from pushing the blade back in and this blade isn't locked by the way so it kind of wiggles around now you could use it like this if you had nowhere to go but the whole point of this is to be able to put it in your pocket and carry it around so i was very frustrated i went through like three or four blades trying to figure out what the problem was and finally then i went online 
And Gerber says, it says works with standard number 11 blades. That's what it says. And then in a little tiny print on their website, it says, however, for best results, use Fisker's number 11 blades. And that's when I said, really? You don't say. So I started comparing the two blades. And I said, they do, they are not the same. They don't match. And the thing is, Fisker's blades, surprise, surprise, are a bit more expensive than the number 11 blades you can buy in bulk. Now, I have needed to switch this out, but I, I haven't done it because I have been waiting to do this video so I could show the difference. Now, it might be a little easier to see with two brand new clean blades. There is a difference in the shape. If you look at the neck and the body, it, it is slightly different. They are slightly different shaped, even though they both say number 11 blades. So now we put the Fiskars one in here and it locks down just fine. It's in there. I can withdraw the blade in and this is like the cutting position and I can bring it and it's fine. Um, I can only imagine if I didn't go and search for that tiny small print, how many blades I might've thrown away thinking they were defective or whatever, or even maybe even bought a new one of these thinking it was defective. Um, it's not, you know, it says in big print, use a standard number 11 blades, but look what they say, standard blades. It's a little misleading if you ask me. Um, and that kind of sucks. So you got it. You got to be careful. Now the Ruck, the R-U-C and the, the Tuck, the T-U-C, I don't know if there's a K involved in those at all. Those are also common um, blade carriers that are out there. I'll throw pictures in. I don't, I, I've never owned them. So I don't know if they, if they need specific sized blades or not, or if they work with whatever. Um, but just imagine if, if you had gone out and got yourself the Pride Red X and you were all excited and you said, you know what, while I'm here, I'm going to buy myself a big supply of number 11 blades because it just says use a standard number 11 blades and you spent money on, by the way, these are a lot more expensive than getting an, in bulk like this off Amazon. You bought two or three packages of these and then when it comes time to switch, you find out you wasted $15, you know, $10, $15 on blades that don't even fit what you have. How frustrated would you be? And it's not like you could just go back to the store and return it because by the time you're, you're ready to replace it, you probably lost that receipt. It's who knows how far down the road. Um, and it's, you know, so I don't know what kind of a, I don't know what kind of arrangement Gerber made with Fiskars. I don't know why they chose that, but they did. And so now I have to remember that these blades go specifically to this one. Now I'm just saying this is a, this is a convenient little thing to carry in your pocket. Um, if you need like, you know, a utility kind of blade holder in your pocket. Um, it's got, a, so just to throw it in there, look, you've got stainless steel construction all the way around. Okay. And I've taken this whole thing apart and it's kind of intuitive to get it back together if you want. But that means that you've got this, the, the power to actually use this as a little mini pry bar. It's not like it's just attached to the aluminum scales here. It's, it's, it's actually the entire body of the tool. And of course you've got, um, it, it functions as a bottle opener, but you can also use this as a little can opener too. If you know how to use one of those can openers, which I have a video on the Doc P channel on how to use those kinds of can openers. There's some value to carrying this around. If you if you need something like this, um, it's not bad. And like I said, it's not overly expensive and it comes in two different colors. So you have fashion options, but there's that. Now, this guy that I spent ridiculous amounts of money on, um, again, looks like number 11 blade. If you just, if you look at it from what's in there. And again, in very fine print, they went, they went a completely different direction. They use the most expensive blades you can find. Um, and I saw that when I bought it and replacing the blade on this thing is, oh boy, if you, if you lose the little pieces involved in this, you are in some kind of misery. I would not recommend this, not at all. Cause there's a screw and there is a spring and so you get to replace the blade without taking the whole thing apart. You could take the whole thing apart, but. And once again, you've got a very different shape going on if you look at it. And yes, I have tried. I have tried to put a number 11 blade in there just to see if it works. 
it's too big to retract it doesn't fit and i've even considered you know taking a dremel and modifying and uh you know doing like a just just shaving it off and everything but um there's also the factor of this little there's got a little notch in here and it doesn't it doesn't fit in this because this is just this hole is just slightly wider for this little notch to fit in for retracting the blade so this one uses the olfa number five blades which are very expensive compared to number 11s and you know what i haven't tried i haven't tried a fiskars number 11 because i just got my hands on them let's see if that actually works oh my gosh the fiskars number 11 fits in there and because the, the fiskars number 11 blade was is cheaper than the olf whatevers uh but no we have nub we have notch problems here again and you know i consider just dremeling this out as well but by the time you're done doing that you know you've invested so much time and energy it defeats the purpose of having a quick easy tool to use you know what i mean so with the olf a5 size blade you put it in and you then have to take this little piece put it through and get that notch lined up come on notch line up this usually goes quicker there we go now you put the screw through the bottom and then you twist this now i have lost if you're not careful with these you can lose the screw and you can lose this little turny knob because it has um stops that kind of lock the blade into the position you want however this thing has just by dang you know i've, ke I've kept it on a keychain um when i was in the shop and it has just by i guess inertia opened itself up so i'm now in the habit when i use it of uh using my nail in the back of the screw there and just tightening it down when i have it closed so that it can't do that now it is comfortable to use it is easy to use it's very lightweight because it's titanium and i have it on this magnetic thing so i can take it off and use it whenever um and it's cool and i force myself to use it because i paid for it but it is absolutely not the most cost efficient solution out there and these blades like i said are, are pretty expensive i would i would totally anodize this thing with you know do some flame heat oxidation anodization if it wasn't for the tritium tubes and i don't want to burn them and pop them and stuff like that but these are some lessons learned that i had to go through when looking at these different options because you know a lot of people are fine with this um, if you're going to be on a workbench if you want to take your blade with you though there are some traveling options but you need to make sure you really read the fine print and know exactly what kind of blades are going to make it work even if it says standard like i said because standard blades but guess what they're not the regular standard number 11 hobby blades that everyone expects you to be able to use so it is just a quick little a quick video i wanted to put together um based on my frustrations hopefully it'll save somebody out there a little bit of frustrations um you know using your tools and a little bit of knowledge that might help you make a decision somewhere in your in your equipment brine process so if you guys have any experiences or any other information that you'd like to share please do feel free in the comments uh, if this has helped you out at all that's great if you've learned something that's awesome as always remember that you are all absolutely awesome I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be back again real soon.